our next question is a video. It's from Mark Blackwell in Glebe, New South Wales. Mr. Carr, Julian Assange is still holed up in the Ecuadorian Embassy in London. I've heard your stroke Australian government's kowtowing head in the sand response ad nausea. Ironically, exactly what Julian Assange and WikiLeaks attempt to counteract. When are you going to show some intelligence and guts on this issue and ask our good friends the USA exactly what their real intentions are regarding one of Australia's more renowned journalists? Okay. Um. <laughs> Julian Assange being in the Ecuadorian embassy in Knightsbridge has got nothing to do with the United States and nothing to do with WikiLeaks and nothing to do with state secrets. I've just been to Laos and I've seen the impact, three million unexploded items of ordnance, of a secret war. So someone who, someone who spills secrets has got my inherent sympathy and support. But Assange is another case and his position here has nothing to do with that part of his journalism. He's there because the Swedes took a case in the courts of the United Kingdom about allegations of criminal behaviour. And they won in the courts of the United Kingdom. Julian Assange could have been the subject of extradition action by the United States any time in the last two years when he's been residing in the UK. He wasn't. To suggest that the Swedes are after him as a CIA conspiracy to get him to Stockholm and allowing, allowing him to be bundled off to Langley, Virginia is sheer fantasy. The Swedes have won in the UK courts. It's nothing to do with WikiLeaks. It's about a criminal allegation made in Sweden. And that's why he's in the Ecuadorian embassy. In this, Australia has precisely no status. We've got no standing in the courts on this in the United Kingdom. We've made representations to the Swedes about him being treated with due process. We've done that three times this month. We've made and every... By the way, uh, just on that score, have you got a, uh, some sort of assurance from the Swedes he would never oh, yes, be extradited yes. well, well, the, the to Swedes, the United the States? The Swedes say it is our policy and has been our policy for decades that we never extradite someone on a matter related to military or intelligence. They just don't do it. That's why there are draft resistors who are still living in Sweden decades after evacuating the United States during the Vietnam War. Now this, this again is a matter between Sweden and its prosecutor who's won in the courts of the United Kingdom and Mr Assange. Now if, if, the, Swedes, if the Swedes had him in Stockholm, it'd be even more, even more harder for the US to extradite, if that's what they want to do, than he's been for the last two years in the United Kingdom. Okay, we've got to, I'm going to, before I bring in the rest of the panel, and we will, I just want to go to another question on this topic. It's from Matt Watt. Uh, people all over the world know that the US government are trying to get their hands on Julian Assange. Some US politicians and commentators have called for his assassination, yet Senator Carr and Ambassador Blech uh, are, are suffering from WikiLeaks grand jury denial. Is it because they're both named in the WikiLeaks releases? Jeff Blanche. Well, perhaps you could take the section about the, uh, <laughs> the WikiLeaks grand jury denial, because I think yeah. that goes to the heart of the matter. No, I mean, I, I think the heart of the matter is there is this sense that the United States is pursuing Julian Assange. Um, the, the, as the foreign minister said, uh, Julian Assange was in London living freely for two years. If the United States had wanted to extradite him from um, England, they could, have, they, they could have done so. We have a more robust extradition treaty with the UK than we have with Sweden. There's no reason to try and you know, come up with some convoluted false charge by two women who claim that he slept with them in, and, and, and forced himself on them without a condom uh, as a way to get him to um, uh, you know, be stuck in Sweden so he can be extradited. It's just a, it, it, it is a ludicrous proposition. It's not yeah, and, and, and so um, we have nothing to do with it. The United States um, has not sought his extradition from the UK. And to the extent that we are focused on any sort of crime, we're focused on the crime of people stealing classified information from the United States. There's currently a proceeding against a guy named Bradley Manning for stealing classified information and then giving it to WikiLeaks. You know, that's, that's what our focus is on. Our question has got his hand up. 
I've got two documents here. These are subpoenas for two US, uh, citizens. One is uh, David House, another one's unnamed. Uh, for a grand jury, it's got the uh, grand jury number on it as well. Uh, will you now admit the grand jury exists? Uh, again, this is one of those sort of gotcha things that people love to do about Joy Assange. They love to say, well, we know the United States never acknowledges whether or not there are grand juries. And the proceedings of grand juries are always confidential for the security of the people who serve on grand juries and also for the confidentiality of their deliberations. That's how we've handled every single grand jury throughout the entire history of the United States. And so when we get questions like, will you admit that there is or is not a grand jury? Or will you admit that there is or is not one of the subjects being pursued? Of course we have to say, well, of course we can't talk about it. And then the answer is, well, then you obviously don't deny it, so it must be true. Yeah, that, that's just, it's, it, it is one of those games that people play in order to create uh, some sense of drama. This is a very simple matter. There's an individual who's been charged with a crime in Sweden. Um, the UK courts were prepared to extradite him. He didn't want to face extradition, so he sought asylum somewhere else. The United States has nothing to do with it. We're not connected with it in any way. UK, Sweden, Ecuador, it's not, it's not our deal. And to try and say, well, there must be something going on that's secret is just that. It's, you know, it's back to the first question. It's, um, you know, movies and fantasies and spy novels. Eva Cox. I think the problem with this one is nobody is saying that they set up the women in Sweden. Nobody is saying the things there. But it, a, a, an inquiry which could have been solved by sending Swedish prosecutors to Britain could have sorted it out, has become a major issue. Look, I was in the States a couple of years ago and I can remember having dinner with some people, Democrat voting senior military people in South Carolina. And this woman came out with a statement. She said, look, as far as we're concerned, somebody should assassinate Julian Assange. You know, because of what he's done is put American lives at risk. There certainly has been some fairly vocal things from the USA saying, you know, this person is a traitor. What you're doing with Bradley Manning is, you know, similarly seen as protecting your rights in the same way as we're talking about the Israelis protecting their secrets and the various other things. There's a, a very nasty feeling of sort of paranoia on all sorts of sides, but the Americans don't give a clear assurance about the whole thing there. The Swedes are pursuing it in a way which I think is completely over the top. Julian Assange is par be probably somewhat paranoid about the whole thing, but he does have some reasons for being paranoid, given lots of statements saying that he'd be better off dead. And I just think, you know, that everybody is sort of trying to say, oh, not us, everything is doing that there. You know, yes, it would be good if Assange went and faced the things there, but he's very uncomfortable about it. Why didn't they send anybody to London? It just strikes me that the whole thing has ended up being a sort of total farrago of fear and misunderstandings and denials to a point where it's become somewhat grotesque. So yeah, they, for, they, for, well, the record, well, for the record, okay, I, yeah. I've, I've told the, uh, the British and I've told the Swedes that if they want a diplomatic solution to this, we would be happy to help in London. But in the meantime, it's got the status of a legal dispute in which we have no standing. The Australians have got yeah. no standing. The Swedes have won in the English courts, and it's a matter between them, the Swedes and the English, and the Ecuadorians. But it's not the English courts. I mean, you're making it sound as though he's been found guilty in some way by no, the English not, courts. No, I'm not. No, no but no. what they have so done they... is all the English courts have done is implemented a European extradition treaty, which has got nothing to do with the quality but of the evidence. But it was a victory. Um, it was a victory for the Swedish prosecutor, and yes, it did take you, place in the, in the English courts. But I'm it not, is. Can we just get to the point that, that the second questioner asked there, uh, Matt Watt? Um, he's basically saying, and although the ambassador can't admit it, that there is a, a grand jury going on <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> Can't admit or deny. You know the. Wait, but you but, can't. But, but no, no, but this, 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 this is the point. Who are those people? This, this is the, the point. And let me, you know, and, 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 and it is the point. is the point is this is all okay, about this is all about misdirection. This is all about, you know, let's not talk about the real issue on the table. The real issue on the table is that there is an organization called WikiLeaks, and their um, goal is to say anyone who steals information from governments will post it up indiscriminately on a website, and anyone can, can read it. Do That's, you regard them, and Julian no. Assange in particular, as a journalist? Because if you did, journalists do that sort of thing all the time. No, so here, <laughs> here, here. And if you do no, no, regard no. Them, 
Yeah. No. If you did regard him, if you did regard him as a journalist, he would have protection under the Freedom of Information Act. Let me say two things. First, you don't really mean that about a journalist. If you really think, first amendment. Do you I'm do you think that journalists <laughs> say, we have look, freedom of information. any information that's you have the taken, first amendment. any information that's taken, I don't care what it is. Um, post office worker at, uh, he's a government employee. He says, you know, all this mail that's coming through, I think everyone should read it. I don't think it should just go to the recipient. All these IRS um, tax forms, I think everyone should know everyone else's financial information. Sure. You know, every medical record, every public hospital, I think every single person um, should get to see everyone's medical records. And, you know, everyone who's proliferating nuclear weapons, I want the people who are, uh, um, you know, who, are, who are, are trying to capture them. I want their efforts to be exposed so the proliferators can get away with it. And I want that guy in Syria who's trying to keep leaders from killing his own people. I want his identity to be revealed so that he can be killed by, by Bashar Assad. That's what I want in the world. And you as a journalist, you receive that information and you say, you know, I'm a journalist, so I'm going to put it all on a website, and I'm going to invoke okay, my so, first so, amendment so, right. So I've, got, so, so, I've got, so I've got a big question for you. Yeah. Why isn't the editor of the New York Times in jail? Because they're the ones who published it. Yeah. No, you see, here's the issue. The New York the, Times, the, the Guardian no one, in Britain, that, that, the biggest see, German newspaper. No one has Most prosecuted... Most of the newspapers in Australia any, published this information. No one has prosecuted any journalist, including anyone from WikiLeaks, for this in the United States. Now, I don't know whether it's legal or illegal, because that's not my job. What I can tell you is it's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. It is fundamentally unsafe, and it hurts the security of every single person who is dependent upon the government to serve their needs, to protect their interests. And that's the reason I reacted so strongly when you said, well, it's a journalist. No, no self-respecting journalist would ever say, that's my job. My job is to just take whatever stuff people throw at me and I'll throw it up on the web. Um, and then, then that, the point of being a journalist, the point of being responsible is to say, I'm gonna take information which is relevant to inform the community about things that really matter to it mm. and to uh, ensure that members of government who are entrusted with particular responsibilities abide by those responsibilities. Okay. That's, that's let's, what let's, journalists do. I, I'm, I, I'm lecturing journalists on journalism. But that is, but, but you honestly, are, yes. that is... And it's quite a long lecture. Shall we hear from some of the other panellists? Malcolm Turnbull. Well, look, I think this, uh, the Assange case got off to a very bad start as far as the Australian government was concerned when Julia Gillard, right at the start, mm. said that he was a criminal, uh, and that he'd, he'd broken the law and said the federal police were going to investigate him and it was perfectly obvious that he had broken no Australian law. Mm. And indeed, ever since the High Court's decision in the Spycatcher case, if he had sought to publish the WikiLeaks documents in Australia, the Australian government, or sorry, the United States government, nor the Australian government, could have obtained an injunction to stop them being published. So he hadn't committed any wrongs under Australian law. From a, he may done something morally wrong, Jeff, and I'm not suggesting mm. that he didn't. But, but so the Australian government portrayed itself through its Prime Minister at the outset of not only not being sympathetic to this Australian who was, who was in very hot water, could say he put himself into it, but absolutely hostile. And at the same time, there were senior American politicians calling for him to be hunted down like a terrorist, mm. which, uh, you know, is, uh, I would think, even for somebody of a nervous disposition, uh, like Assange would uh, create a fair degree of anxiety. Uh, now, as far as the question about Sweden versus the UK is concerned, I've, I've take, I took up Assange's case in the sense of making representations to Kevin Rudd when he was the foreign minister, because of some of Assange's uh, supporters were constituents of mine and had asked me to do that, and, I, and I'd spoken about it, and I asked Kevin Rudd to have a close look at it. And the advice that he gave back to me, which I might say was consistent with my own conclusions, was that he was under no more likelihood of being, um, was no more susceptible of being extradited from Sweden than he was from the UK. And his lawyers were arguing that he was very vulnerable in Sweden, but not so vulnerable in the UK. And at that actually is not the case. And I've, I've just, uh, I just don't, I don't buy that and I can't find anyone who's expert in the area that does. So I think the, you know, um, you know there's a great old saying uh, that anyone can go to jail if they get the right lawyer. Uh, and it's also, <laughs> it's also true that anyone who's, uh, you know, represents himself has a uh, fool for a counsel. But I'd say this, 
that Julian Assange, I think, would have been much better advised if he had actually gone to Sweden and got this thing dealt with. I think he has been, uh, and I say this, you know, without wanting to judge the morality of his conduct, but just looking at it, sem you know, professionally, as though I was back in my old job as a lawyer, I don't think he served his own interests at all well, and I think he would have been better off going to Sweden, dealing with what doesn't look like, I might be wrong, the biggest, you know, prosecution in the world, uh, dealing with that rather than finding himself in the Ecuadorian embassy. Now, I'll just make one other point. You know, I don't, I'm not convinced that he's broken any American law either, mm. you know, quite frankly, unless there is evidence that he somehow or other conspired with Bradley Manning or paid him or induced him in some sort of dishonest way, I think the US government has enormous First Amendment problems in prosecuting him, enormous First Amendment problems, and of course that would only make him a martyr. And if there's anybody, anybody, who is, I, I can't think of anyone in the world today who is keener to climb up on the cross and be martyred than Julian Assange. <laughs> And right, so okay, right, yeah. I don't see why the US <laughs> government would want to give him a leg up. Let's uh, well, a, a quick, a final and quick response from oh. the ambassador. No, I mean, uh, you know, quick response is that's, that's why you have processes. The, the reason that there's a process for declassifying information is because, you know, you want to have, uh, you don't want to have any individual member of the government deciding what, uh, what secrets are revealed and which ones aren't. And the same thing with, you know, that's why you don't have panelists, um, you know, sort of deciding what American law is. We have a whole process and people will figure out whether or not a law was committed or not committed. And, is, is and that, that, is that's it, what do you think that that process is underway as we speak? You know, trying I honestly, to find out if he's guilty of a crime. You know, uh, all I know is that there has been an investigation of um, Bradley Manning, and, and, and wherever that takes um, the uh, prosecutors and Department of Justice, they look to see whether a crime was committed, and then, you know, if there's evidence to support a prosecution. They don't start out saying, okay, we have to prosecute these people, now let's figure out a way to do it. That isn't our process, and so it's just going through a normal, normal process. Which Assange may well be part of. Uh, you can't confirm or deny. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no, it's time, all right, okay, all right, okay, it's time to move along.